Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And uh, we are seeing, the, once again, another tight range. Um, we're just lacking movement. I, I'm wondering whether or not this is going to continue to uh, go on until the end of the year. Uh, not only here, but we're also seeing it uh, uh, in equities. And we'll take a quick look there also. Bear with me. Here we are, we're, I mean, once again, we're, you know, with the S&Ps, it's just like it was yesterday and the day before, basically just stuck here at 3,200. 10-year um, note is is on its lows. Um, gold stuck here right around this, just a hair below uh, 1480. We've kind of moved around here, uh, trading between 70, I guess 78 on up to about 84. There's been a little bit of movement here. And... Um, Crude oil, which we discussed yesterday on the uh, FX Daily Roundup, uh, still close to $61. Um, one of the things we were noting here, at least on the crude oil, was that uh, I'd seen an article where that had been trading in the tightest range in a decade. I don't, know, I don't know how long it was looking at that range, but it said that the, the amount of time that stayed in this uh, tight, I guess, uh, few dollar range, and that now that we've broken out to the upside, um, you have to be careful with that because um, I think that uh, you will have traders that uh, that are going to hold this longer that will probably go with this. And as I mentioned uh, um, when we discussed that yesterday, is that uh, it may, you know, they may be able to contain it a bit. There's a little bit of selling uh, as traders may try and uh, short this. Um, but... Uh, I think it eventually will probably just go and resolve itself higher. And I think by the end of the week, we might see this thing push even higher. So you got to be careful uh, stepping here on the short side. That being said, let's go and move back into the FX side. And let's go and take a look at the um, economic data that's out for today. We do have uh, UK retail sales at the bottom of the hour here, uh, as well as uh, that's uh, Bank of England vote today. This BOE, and let's see here, regular jobless claims, as well as uh, we do have Philly Fed, 8.30 Eastern, Canadian wholesale trade, and existing home sales at 10 a.m. Eastern. So I guess the, the one data that's coming out will be at the bottom of the hour. It's going to be uh, UK retail sales. We did get uh, Aussie employment. I was really frustrated yesterday. Uh, I wanted to go and trade on this, and uh, for some reason, well, not for some reason. I guess because of the time change, I'm not sure. But <clears throat> I thought the the data was going to be out at um, eight thirty uh, eight thirty Eastern, um, and the Data actually came at, came in an hour earlier than that, uh, so it was uh, frustrating to say the least. Um, so by the time I came in, so uh, came in, uh, we had already ex exhibited the move here. So let's go on and move this out of the way. And the Aussie actually rallied a bit, and we've cut, and still once again within a very tight range, and we've maintained those gains uh, uh, with the Aussie report. I, I thought we would have had um, a lot more volatility associated with that. And the dollar index, we'll go and get into that, but we have paired back a bit here. We're going in. Um, take a quick look into the analysis.
So it says the euro closed below immediate daily support of 1130. Okay, opening the door for an intraday challenge of 1082, a daily close below 1105, seals the fate of the euro for a move to 1020 with a potential drop to 950. Resistance is 1054, um, and I meant to go and say 1154 uh, here, but you can see here we've had uh, this pullback here yesterday, and we did get below 1130. Moment. 11.30 in this close, and as I mentioned, opens the door to come down here to uh, 10.80, or actually 10.82, intraday-wise. Now, if we do close, if we were to close below 11.05, that opens the door for us to come all the way down here to 10.20, and we could really start to see the wheels come off of the caboose. But that being said, right now, our intraday support that we're going to be looking at is for uh, 10.82, although Critical is going to be if we were to close a daily close below 1105, really opens the door for a much lower move. Uh, right now, resistance on the upside then would be 1154. 1154. So let's go ahead and mark that off. Considering this tight range that we've been in, it probably seems a lot to go for it to drop down. But once again, my thoughts were when we got this close below 1130, really opens the door that we could press it. Now, whether we do or not, we shall see. But um, resistance on the upside at this point is going to be 1154. Now, despite that pullback, we're still trading basically in a range, very tight range. As we'll see whether or not we get that follow through down here to uh, to go on and test beyond, you know, go sub one eleven here. And with the cable, the cable as well as the other sterling pairs have regressed significantly from the UK election night. Cable support comes in at 3050, followed by 3011. Resistance is 3155, 3135 57. Resistances, and that's going to be that resistance with 3206 looming ahead. So after this pairback that we've seen here, um, and we have seen quite the slide here. Um, if we were to go on a pullback from 3050, we even fall beyond that. It's going to come in at 3011. For right now, the market seems to be holding in a very, very tight range. Um, and I was was thinking that we might even see a little bit of a bounce here. We're not seeing it so far, but we had a pretty decent fall. I mean, to look at it, you can see uh, close to, you know, what, 450 pips. Uh, from the highs that were just literally days ago. So we'll go ahead and stay with this 3050 for now for uh, resistance, but beyond that would be 3011. So you see that we still have that here. And on the upside, resistance is going to be 3135 slash 57. So let's go on in. There we go. And I thought, like I said, we haven't yet, but I thought we might see a little bit more uh, short covering here at this point, because even for those that played it short, you'd, you'd want to go on and cover at least partial at this uh, 3050. So I'm a bit surprised we haven't seen a bit more short covering, at least to send us up here towards 3150, but, but we shall see.
And what was I thought was going to be a pretty big move, uh, and we did move a little bit here, which was in the Aussie dollar, and as I mentioned, a bit frustrating uh, yesterday. Uh, I thought that the employment report came out, um, again, it was going to be out at 8.30 Eastern, and I just assumed that. I didn't even uh, check, and turns out it came in an hour early, so uh, hour earlier, so when I showed up, um, about five minutes before what I expected was the open, it turned out that the uh, Aussie uh, employment report had come out 55 minutes earlier. Uh, that being said, we did go on and move a little bit here on this uh, um, pair, but not to the extent that I would have seen. Um, now, we know that there was going to be some pressure here. And let me go on and move into that. Has the Aussie closed right at key support? At 68.48, the employment report uh, can take the pair down to 68.07, followed by 67.67. Resistance will be 69.14. Now, we close right in here, just right around the 68.48 key area. I thought the potential was going to be for us to drop lower, and um, I was looking at potentially the the sterling note is a great air, we'd see some volatility. We actually worked higher. Now, it's not like it was if we got gangbusters, but it was like I said, you know, we closed right here almost at 68.48, and what we've rallied about, what, 35 pips? So it's, it's a bit <laughs> disappointing if you're looking for volatility, probably in line with what we've been seeing uh, throughout this week of, I mean, cl complete sheer lack of volatility. You can see here that we did come in right into this resistance uh, but I'm not sure if you can call that resistance at 30, literally uh, a little bit less than 30 pips from the close. Uh, but our resistance here um, is going to be right there at 69.14. It's just down a bit. Now we did hold this area here. Um, so for today, um, post election, let's see here. It's going to be right there at 68.31. I mean, we're just trading in an exceptionally tight range. We're actually moving just a hair lower, It says the Kiwi remains locked in a tight range, uh, absent momentum. Key upside resistance is 66.32, with support at 65.42, followed by 65, uh, 64.93. Uh, I guess you could say that just about all appears when we talk about absent momentum. Um, but you can see here, up here at 66.32, um, although we, we, one thing I guess we can go and say is after a strong three-week run, even though I expect a bit of a pullback. Actually, you know, when you look at this Gravestone Doji, we haven't pulled back very much at all whatsoever. Um, but it'd be 66.32, and um, on the downside, seems so tight, though. It's going to be uh, 65.42. This will stick with the 65.35, but on the upside, it's going to be 
where some of these pairs are just simply not even moving. Look at it. Um, It was just less than 15 pip range for the dollar cad. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, I'm talking about the lack of volatility that we're seeing here. So it says the dollar cad remains weak with downside support coming in at 30.97. Um, the two, and that's going to be a two-hour support level. With the trend line daily support coming in at 30.90, where short covering uh, should emanate, resistance is going to be 31.60, followed by 31.84. Um, let's go mark this here. We'll split the difference, and so we're going to go and call this 3093. And when I say as far as split the difference is um, you can see here this trend line would come in right there around 3090, okay? And then if we take a look at the two-hour, thirty ninety seven is our support level. So we're basically splitting the difference between the, the daily trend line at 3090 and um, this uh, two hour support level coming at 3097. So we're just looking for our support. It's gonna be at 3093, 3093. But wow, look at that. That is one dead market. But then I guess you can say that really across the board, it's not even just FX, but you know, here we are even with equities. We are simply not even moving. Now, we did get the impeachment vote. Uh, uh, Trump was, uh, um, those uh, on two articles of impeachment were approved. Um, not even, I mean, the markets didn't even flinch. Not that they expect anything to come from the impeachment in the Senate. So I'm just saying you would expect some kind of little bit of movement, nothing. I mean, that's across the board that we're not seeing any movement. We are seeing, you know, the, the tenure note just essentially drip lower, but uh, for the most part, all these markets are very quiet. So it says the dollar peso has found some value buying at support level of 1892. Resistance comes in at 1908, followed by 1912. A daily close below 1892 would send the pair to uh, 1875. So um, one of the things we've seen with this peso is really com com uh, completely apart. Um, even when we came down here to 1923.6, which is a the pivot, we were looking, you know, you might see a little bit of a bounce, and we kept sliding, thought, okay, we'll make it to 1908, which we did, and we said, well, there's a potential stretch to 02, and I thought we'd see a nice bounce there. We talked about that yesterday. We did see a bounce. It took us to 1808, I mean, 1908, and then we continued to remain under pressure, find some support at 1897, then pressing the next day down to 1892, where we've held, and we're getting a little bit of covering. Now, Obviously, some of this is associated with what, we, what we've seen here in equities. But uh, all we've seen is just a little bit of, I'd probably have to refer to as probably minor short covering here. So we've got 1892. We're going to maintain that. And then on the upside, We'll go with 1908, and the uh, sentiment is still bearish. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, not really a whole lot to say other than just to move right there. You see that 1908 coming across here, these touches. And if we stretch up a little bit higher, we're looking right there at 1912. Now going with the yen, since the dollar yen has found a home in the, 19, in the 950 level, upside resistance is 977, uh, with 1007 a key daily level, confluence with 1002, uh, which would be the 161% of the recent range of 970 uh, to 920. Support is 927. So let's take a little bit closer look here at the dollar yen. We were talking about this in the chat room yesterday morning or late in the U.S. session about the dollar yen. And one thing is we, we've we finally got a little, little bit of a foothold above 927. Uh, we did get it, you know, what was about two weeks ago when we slid right back. But we're holding here, although in a very tight range, we actually slid below. Um, let's get a little bit closer look in here. We've actually slid below 9.54, and um, look like we may start to slide, but we regain that, and we're holding steady just in this area here. Well, you can see the resistance coming in at 9.77, and then above that, 10.07. Now, what I'm thinking is if we can squeeze the shorts a little bit, we may be able to make this move up to 10.07, but as I mentioned before, if you look where S&Ps are at, all-time highs, this dolly in should easily be you know, closer towards, if not at, 1.13. Um, but we haven't yet. But we, if they can press the shorts a little bit, we may be able to get to 10.07 now. Where I'm seeing the confluence is, here's the 10.07, very key on the daily, but let's go and take a look at the two-hour chart. And if you take a look at this recent range, nine seventy down to nine twenty, and we take an extension of that one hundred sixty one. Excuse me, one hundred sixty one percent takes us right to ten oh two. So that's the confluence that I'm looking at. Let's go on and get rid of this now. So the 1002 would confluence here with the 1007, that key data level. And <clears throat> What I was thinking is if we could push the spoos up a little bit higher, that might trigger some stops going in towards the close of this week. And once again, that's why I'm looking for the market. Uh, one of the things we were discussing in the chat room uh, uh, in the late morning of the U.S. session was, was saying, hey, look, you know, if you're an ardent, you know, uh, dolly and bear, well, at least you know where your risk is, which is a daily close here at 10 of 7. Uh, if you haven't taken a, a, a short, but you're inclined to be short, uh, once again, then you may want to go on and allow for this market to make this run up here, if it does, up here to nine, uh, 977, and then see what this market does closer to 110, knowing that 1007 is a key data level, and we have a nice confluence uh, between uh, the most recent range, which is 970 to 920. <laughs> For now, we've got 977 here on resistance and on support, it's going to be 927.
Yeah, thanks. So Rick mentioned about the uh, starting data, UK data coming out. Let's take a look here. We haven't seen any real movements. We're going to jump into the uh, cross rate pairs because we can see it going up here against it, the, the guppy, the sterling odd, and uh, cable right here. And not seeing a whole lot of movement. Let's go on and jump into the data. There we go. Retail sales data came in down six tenths. Um, X fuel down six tenths. Also, the year over year one percent gain. They're looking for a two point one percent gain. So, you know, I think I saw where Amanda said, "Oops," and yeah, sure it looks like uh, um, they were expecting better figures. Let's go move this out of the way here. We can see a pullback, but still in a very very tight range. Very tight range. Um, not really uh, any big movement to say the least. This is in here's on the stirring knot, which I was really disappointed. Um, you know, I was ready to go and trade that uh, Aussie data, and I thought it came out an hour later. And I show up to the to the dance. Turns out the Aussie data had come out 55 minutes earlier, and I was pretty upset. Uh, so I just. Uh, <clears throat> went and just watched the news uh, last evening um, about the impeachment vote. And actually went to bed rather late, still watching it. Um, just listen to the talking heads. I mean, not that there was much of anything else to do. Um, but I was a bit frustrated here. But once again here, we've seen the release of the data, and there hasn't been that much of a move here. Not that much of a move at all. Not much of a move at all. And once again, here's the data here. Now, part of that uh, might be because of uh, the BOE vote um, later on this morning. Not that anyone is expecting anything, but uh, but I am surprised by the lack of response. Considering how much uh, volatility we have seen, or at least pretty good uh, pullback. Uh, from um, election night. I would have thought we would have seen this market, you know, dance around a bit with that, uh, with, especially with the surprise that came out. They're expecting three tenths. This market swung down to a minus six tenths on uh, month over month. Year over year was expecting 2.1, got 1%. Yeah, Amanda's right. It says dead cat bounce so far in cable after 500 pip drop in four days. I know. I'm just surprised. I, I'm, you know, I would have thought we'd have seen something bigger move, but um, it is what it is. But it's still surprising. But I guess you know what? Maybe it's in line with this, with the way this week's been, uh, with the lack of, of movement. And really across across the board, no matter what asset class you're looking at, for the most part. Not just FX, but equities have been absolutely dead. Even though they've moved to an all-time side, they've just just been squeezing just a little bit higher. Uh, we saw a little bit better movement yesterday in the NASDAQ, but the S&P has been you know, completely dead. Now, better movement as far as it's just moving higher. Haven't really seen any real volatility. Let's go on and go into the cash dollar index now. So the dollar index closed above resistance 97.38, as well as slightly above the broken trend line. You can see that here, yesterday's close. Resistance is going to be 97.68 with support at 97.15. Well, we closed above here, and you can see this. Let's pull this back. Here's that broken support level. We closed just above that yesterday. We're not doing anything with it. Oh, I thought we might see a little bit for follow through. Um, we've got 97.68 for our resistance. That's going to remain. And even though we haven't seen any real follow through, but it will move it to 97.68. Now, We have this as bearish for now. 
Although we have reclaimed the level, but are we doing anything with it? No, we've actually slid below. So I'm still keeping this as a bearish tilt. We'll see what happens. And on the downside, we're looking at support at 97.15. And let's go move into the cross rates. Well, looking here at the Kiwi Yen, <clears throat> it's been one heck of a move over the last three weeks. It's actually stretching into four weeks. We're taking a pause here, but look at this move. I mean, it's been nothing short of stellar. I mean, we even came down here, tagged the trend line, and bounced right off of it to close above 72 cents. I mean, it's not that we're way, of it, way above it, but once again, you got to go in and give it its due. When you look at everything else has been dead, yeah, we're quiet this week, but look, it's been quite the phenomenal three-week run. And even then, we're still holding our own, even though the market is relatively quiet uh, this week. So we are holding here, um, but uh, we'll look for this potentially come back down here to test that support level, which has moved higher. That's going to come in at 71.87. On the downside, and on the upside, well, there it is, seventy-one thirty-seven. I mean, a positive seventy-two thirty-seven, right there, and. Um, you can see that coming across all these touches. See right there. Now, we may look right here, but it's this is where the, the actual resistance, whether we can push beyond that, is going to come in. So, as I mentioned, we'll go with the 7237. So, adjusting this a bit higher. And let's go move into the euro yen. Well, this is probably more about a testament to the weakness we've seen in the yen versus the actual euro. And actually, well, from yesterday, when we saw the euro pair back, we also saw this pull back. But it held here at the uh, 2172 area here. We're trading in very tight range, but once again, we weren't able to break higher. We haven't pulled back with much, uh, with much uh, of uh, much strength, I guess you'd call it. You would have thought that maybe with the uh, Pull back, we want especially when the year we can maybe we would have seen a little bit uh, further drop, <clears throat> but it hasn't. So I have to give it give it its due for holding here. So it's going to be we're looking at twenty one seventy two. I think we have to move that just a hair lower, just in case. So let's go over this. Let's go right there. Twenty one fifty three. Looking out, it did hold it, but uh, want to give it some more room if the euro does break in as we come in towards the end of the week. And on the upside, 
we had 22.24, and I want to go and keep that. Uh, once again, we're trading in tight range. The the yen has been weaker, but um, my concern is we could see this euro slide back a bit. Although, once again, it's been quiet all week long. This market may decide just to um, close where they're at tomorrow, where they are today, uh, with this lack of volatility we've seen. Uh, and I think most of us have got the same sentiment. Can't wait for 2019 to be over with. This has just been unbelievable. As unbelievable as the year has been, um, the last few weeks, and I was noting that, and I saw, I think it was Blake or someone said that they had seen that uh, or noted a, a story, was that, I, you know, I was saying over the last, you know, few weeks I had not seen ever and um, this lack of volatility, and I think that uh, Blake had talked about that was uh, uh, it was actually the lowest volatility uh, in the history of the of the euro, and it's just been unbelievable. I mean, like I said, I can imagine imagine yeah, you're using the right word. I can remember when uh, the daily ATR used to be right around 127, 127 pips. That was a daily ATR. Whew. Talk about those were the days. Um, let's go move into the euro on. So we did manage to successfully tested 6095, which we thought we were going to drop back there from was it our early part of last week. We thought that we would have to slide back down here. We eventually did. We successfully defended that. We moved higher. Uh, we tested the upper bounds of this. We even had that before. I think we had it at 6295 previously. And we've rolled back here in the lack of momentum, um, to say the least. Uh, we even had our resistance yesterday, 62.95, saying it's in a range, and in a range it is. Um, on the downside, we had 62.30. We've even actually moved even below that. Um, and this is where I see the support here. Let's move this all the way. Right there coming across these touches, which is where they found support today. Uh, it's going to come in right there. It's just called 61.45. And in a range, we are definitely in. You can even see this 40-day moving average basically flatlining. I mean, there's just no movement, and it's across the board, needless to say. Let's go and move into the uh, Euro Kiwi. Well, we're stuck in the same thing here, and there's there's no movement here. I mean, there's no no change whatsoever in what we're looking at as far as the the support um, we have for sixty eight sixty two, then on the upside sixty nine ninety four, and we're just trading absolutely quiet. Even with a big mover like this. It appears that the, the range has been uh, 32 pips, 35 pips. And this is a, a pair that we've seen, you know, some pretty good moves here. We have from 6972, you're talking 160 pips there. I mean, so we've had all of the move of 35 pips. Let's go and move into the ASEAN.
same thing here, tight range. The only thing we, we can say is it's pressing the upside a little bit, and that's because of the Aussie data that came out. We saw we saw also with the Aussie versus the dollar, a little bit of a, a relatively tight range, although an upside bid, and we've seen that here. Um, looking here, the real resistance is going to come in right there. 7562 which we have here and on the downside 7473 and um, we're holding above that so we're going to go and retain that 7473 but uh, nothing happening here Let's go and move into the guppy. Well, we've seen the pullback and um, we are just quiet as can be. Look at this. Move. This puts it in a little bit better context. So we've had quite the meteoric run here. And we paired back, which is very key support here, this 43.36. And we thought there were potentially we could slide a little bit lower, especially when we got below the trend line and we're potentially looking for a move to 42.56, but it's still holding its own here. Um, 42.89 is the uh, 23 percent here. And you can see right there. Right there. 42.65. Let's go with that. And on the upside, there's that 44.11 we're coming with, but actually comes in, yeah, 44.10 off one pip. Um, we're going, just for the sake of whatever, we'll move it to be exactly there, which is 44.10. But we just haven't seen any movement now. After these big moves and we've just gone quiet we've gone radio silent let's go move into the uh, starting versus the odd well we saw the big moves here and now everything's gone quiet um, I myself thought that with the starting data, um, starting data, the Aussie employment data, that we were going to see a jump and then potentially then we'd be able to pull back. And um, obviously we got a bit stronger uh, or positive release on that employment data. We did, we'd already fallen, so we didn't slide very much but we just haven't seen very much movement whatsoever. I thought we had the chance to jump into here and then pair back and um, we saw better data overall. So looking at where we are, um, let's go move into the two hour. Resistance is going to be right there. 
and support. <clears throat> Well, we just about got there. Eighty nine seventy five and eighty nine ninety five. We'll go right there. Eighty nine sixty three, eighty nine sixty three. And that's all we have. I mean, here was the dollar index. Look, we're starting to slide back after you, as I mentioned, we got above the daily resistance yesterday, which was 97.38. And we actually closed above the, the, the trend line, the broken trend line. And what are we doing with it? We're just rolling back. The euro, which had closed below 11.30, instead of, you know, some further follow through, we just kind of, not that we're rallying very much off of those, you know, um, lows we've moved up about 20 pips but there's just no real movement here uh dolly yen look at this is and i think blake posted on there <clears throat> that the yen was uh, the quietest volatility and i don't know how long he showed but um, he posted that in the room and you can see here the yen is just simply not even moving it is just i did see i remember a time when it was pretty quiet i think it's about maybe five years ago that we saw this. I don't even remember what the level it was trading at the time, but I remember trading in you know quiet ranges where you wouldn't see even very much of a movement. Uh, and we're certainly seeing that, but obviously this being impacted by the holidays and uh, actually, you know, like I said, it's been not, this uh, not the yen overall, but I'm just saying is lack of volatility has been the the name of the game for 2019 for the most part. Uh, Dollar cat still on the weak side here. Uh, we do have Bank of England later on today. Um, and like I said, you know, no movement here. Spoos are trading at 3201. We'll go and take a quick look there. They're pushing a little bit higher. Um, you see there, it's on a two hour chart here. I'll put the NAS on a two hour chart. Just not seeing much movement at all here. Gold is, is trading relatively quiet here. We have continued to maintain a little bit of an upside bid. And crude oil, once again, like I said, have to caution, be careful. We're still holding around $61. I think eventually it will resolve itself to push even further as traders just go with that momentum. And uh, bonds just continue, in this case, 10 years, continue to drip lower. That's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar, and we'll catch you later in the chat room.